If you project positivity, you will attract positivity. And it all starts in your mind. So you have to be very conscious. Conscious leadership is really the word for these times. You've got to be very conscious about what you're thinking because your, th your thoughts manifest your actions and your actions manifest your results. So I think this is what I would advocate. Please be conscious that whatever you project, you attract. Hello and welcome everybody to a new series of the Leaders Hum interview series that we conduct. Uh, welcome to our program today and a video channel specifically targeting leaders and young leaders uh, through our Leaders Hum series. Uh, it is an honor for me today to welcome Dr. Nick Eberl. Uh, so let me first uh, give you a quick background about him. Um, you know, when, when and I'll start a story. Uh, you know, when Germany was hosting the Soccer World Cup uh, and the whole world was, you know, reversing their stereotypes about German people over uh, Dr. Nick had started a research project that would take him halfway across the world and he ended up kind of publishing a book called How Germany Won the World Cup of Nation Branding. This book, uh, you know, somehow got into the hands of the current South African president at that time and he asked Dr. Nick to spend the next four years helping South Africa, who were the 2010 hosts, to achieve a similar turnaround of destination branding. This is when he discovered the power of reciprocation, as he calls it. He's done it for all, uh, and he continues to help companies. Uh, he's a part of company direct board of directors, does TED Talks across the world, and is a winner of many international awards. He has helped build a global media brand and helped South Africa achieve the highest brand advocacy score in the history of the FIFA World Cup with almost a 92% rating. And so I would want to welcome Dr. Nick to the program. Thank you. Great to be here. Thank you very much for hosting me. Yeah. So, uh, Dr. Nick, you've, you've had uh, you know, held several roles and responsibilities over the years, and they all sound very interesting. Um, and I believe currently you are kind of the co-founder and chief innovation officer at LinkedIn DealMaker. So could you help explain to our audience, you know, all the different roles that you play? Well, uh, let me trace back a little bit. By trade, I'm a brandologist. I'm a brand historian. I did my PhD in Germany on the history of branding and uh, brand leadership all the way from the Roman Empire to modern times. I came out to South Africa as a lecturer just before the first free elections in Mandela, 1994. And uh, I had the good fortune to be part of the 2006 um, FIFA World Cup that was hosted by Germany. As you know, Germany had a terrible brand image ever since the war. And it really managed to reverse these stereotypes um, and their brand image through hosting the FIFA World Cup in 2006. Um, I did the research report on how Germany won the World Cup of Nation Branding. And then exactly like you said, President Beke asked me to come on board for 2010 and help with the destination branding campaign for South Africa, um, which was all about converting visitors to brand advocates for Destination South Africa so that they would recommend this destination back home to their friends and their colleagues. And I'm very pleased to say we achieved a 92% net promoter score. So 92% of visitors actually converted to brand advocates for Destination South Africa versus 88% in Germany. Wow. And okay. And when the FIFA World Cup was over, we had to reinvent our business because FIFA was gone, the sponsors were gone. And that's when we took to LinkedIn because at the time in 2010, LinkedIn had morphed from a recruitment platform to probably the world's most potent marketing and branding channel. 
So for the last 10 by now 11 years, we've been helping our clients, especially tech clients like IBM, SAP, Red Hat, and financial institutions to use LinkedIn to attract new clients and to grow the business. And that's really what the LinkedIn DealMaker is all about. And I've joined forces with probably Africa's leading conscious deal maker, Yatin Sony, who has concluded close to $2 billion of deals in 25 countries over the last 10 years. So that's why we call it the LinkedIn deal maker. How to initiate deals on LinkedIn. Wow, fascinating. You, you talk a lot about referral marketing programs. Uh, could you elaborate a little bit for our audience as to, you know, why is it that certain organizations are good at it and some are not so good at it? And what are the best like, tips that you would give organizations to be good at referral marketing? Well, the research has shown that 64% of new business comes from referrals. Yet 79% of companies do not have a referral marketing system in place. And uh, there's a good reason for that because they don't know how to ask for referrals. When you do work for a client, the client is happy and you ask for a referral, many times it feels like you're extracting value. And businesses don't really know how to do it in such a way that you add value rather than extracting value. And that is really what referral marketing is all about, especially on LinkedIn, because clearly your best salespeople are your clients, especially your happy clients. And if you ask the right way, they will be more than happy to introduce you to their network. And that is actually the easiest and the most effective way to grow your business and to acquire new clients, because as you know, a referral is four times more likely to engage with you than a cold client. Especially now that cold calling, cold emailing is extremely ineffective and it's, it's being outlawed in many legislations like Canada, South Africa, Europe. So it's, you have to build relationships. Right, right, absolutely. No, completely agree with you. Uh, you also kind of, you know, had this very intriguing story and talk about the social contract of humanity. Um, and, uh, you know, while doing the introduction, I also talked about the principle of reciprocation. So do you mind sharing some of your thoughts along those uh, ideas with our audience? Yes, certainly. So really reciprocation in my research is the most fundamental social contract of humanity. Because if I help you to achieve what you want to achieve, you're most likely to return the favor. Um, and in Africa, it's actually Mandela called it Ubuntu. I am because you are. Um, it is all about building relationships and leading with value. Um, building relationships of mutual value. Um, and leading with value first. So reciprocation really works best if you provide value in a personalized way that is unexpected and you're the first to give. This is how you build up your bank of goodwill that you can then leverage. You can leverage these um, relationships when the time is right. People will be most ready to return the favor when you ask them, after you have provided value first. And that's really the new currency, in my belief, in this new economy, especially on LinkedIn, where it, you can no longer just spam people. You have to leave this value. And you, that means understanding what is valuable to them. And you have to be the first to give. And that's really what I've been practicing now for many, many years. And uh, it's really, the key, it's been the key and continues to be the key to our success. I see, great. Um, I noticed you are also, um, you know, a founder and the executive chair, uh, and you mentioned, uh, you know, working with the future leaders think tank. 
Uh, you've also spoken at many, uh, you know, uh, events across the globe. We would love to hear your views on what do you think are characteristics that define successful leaders who are able to motivate and carry the team along with them? And what advice would you give to new aspiring leaders? Well, that's a very good question. And I've been interviewing 200 global leaders on exactly this question on the future of leadership. It's a future leader forum. And there are certain insights that are coming out. So first of all, the best leaders are really good at co-creating. Uh, co-creating because people typically support what they create. And obviously today, everybody is talking about collaborating, but co-creating co co is taking collaborating to, ne to another level, where you deliberately form alliances, and that is the key word. What we've seen is that the best leaders, they're very good at forming alliances um, with peers in the industry, and also with people outside of the industry to co-create new models. So, so partnerships are key, whether you are an entrepreneur, you're a small business or corporate, partnerships are absolutely key to your growth today. And secondly, you have to co-create. You have to co-create across the board, not just in, within your company or within your industry. You also have to bring in as many diverse voices as possible from outside your industry. Um, remember Steve Jobs, reinvented four industries, um, from the music industry to the computer industry, to the phone industry. And he did that mainly through collaboration and co-creation. So in my view, this is vitally important. Um, and that is a hallmark of leadership in these times. It's kind of interesting. And uh, have, has the pandemic uh you know over the last year that the whole world has gone through uh shed any additional light in terms of leadership characteristics that you have noticed yes well we track trends by applying a model we call motivational intelligence there are seven triggers um that motivate human beings to action and we've seen a significant shift and these emotivators work in pairs. So the first pair is the need for assurance versus the need for challenge. So pre-COVID, uh, many people were driven more by challenge than assurance. So that's why you had the need for adventure and, um, and exploring, whereas now obviously more people are drawn by the need for assurance, for assurance for their own survival, for the survival of their, of their business, and so on. The second pair is connection and significance. So pre the pandemic, many people were driven by significance. They wanted to be more significant. We had the selfie culture, we had the celebrity uh, cult, um, the Kardashians and co. Now this has really been diminished and people are driven more by connection. They want to connect, they want to really connect with other human beings. And the third pair is, and that's very interesting, especially in business, the third pair is growth, the need to grow versus the need to contribute. And what we've seen the shift is pre-pandemic, um, people are very focused on contributing. Now, because of the recession and other factors, there has been a trend towards growing. People are now really feeling the need to grow, to grow personally, spiritually, and to grow their business. These are the shifts we're seeing in the world. And there's a new zeitgeist that is emerging. I see. Very fascinating. That was, that was very insightful, Dr. Nick. Uh, I think to end, I just have uh, one final question, which is targeted to, you know, we are still in the throes of the pandemic, we have, uh, you know, still a lot of countries struggling. So what advice would you give the graduating class of 2021 as they start to embark on their career? 
Well, I think what we've seen now, and it's been validated by the likes, by the leaders like Elon Musk, is there's been a shift from education, focusing on your education, focusing on your experience, on skills. What now really is making you more successful is are your skills, especially the new skills. So you have to ask yourself, what are the new skills in this new economy? Um, Co-creation is definitely one. And then personally, I advocate a quote um, that goes, what you project, you attract. So I think that is more important today than ever. If you project positivity, you will attract positivity. And it all starts in your mind. So you have to be very conscious. Conscious leadership is really the word for these times. You've got to be very conscious about what you're thinking because your, th your thoughts manifest your actions and your actions manifest your results. So I think this is what I would advocate. Please be conscious that whatever you project, you attract.